So it's thanks to Cy Russia for sending me this e-bike to review and keep. Uh, so I'm going to give it a good little test. Right, let's go. Okay, that's five now, so it's going to be topping us out. 25 kilometers an hour, minimal effort. I mean, that is amazing. Suspension is, is doing a great job over this, uh, <laughs> over this ground. It really, I mean, it, like this, it feels like a little motorbike. It's just ridiculous, you know, just putting this little effort in and still it bombing you along, kind of crazy. It's taken me a while to sort of think about e-bikes because in the UK, we have this law and they're basically hobbled and they have a top speed of 15 miles an hour and a limit of the motor at 250 watts. So when you buy one of these in the UK, it comes in its UK legal form, obviously, which means it's restricted to 250 watts, but it also comes with instructions on the website of how to de-restrict it. So it has a thousand watt motor that you can de-restrict it to if you want to. Obviously, you, you then can't legally use it anywhere, basically, in the UK at all. So I haven't done that. Now, actually, I was going to make this video with the intention of de-restricting it and testing it off-road and just sort of seeing what it can do. But I think actually that does this. It kind of disservice as to how useful and how good this is actually in UK legal form. So I'm not going to do that and just concentrate on what it's like to use it in its UK legal form. In all seriousness, this is such a big heavy bike that I think anything over 15 and a half miles an hour would be actually pretty dangerous. The idea of letting kids loose on something like this is kind of ridiculous. So I think actually this is definitely a reasonable point to have this kind of limit. Step through design does make it really easy to get on and off gotta say. So as soon as you start slowly turning the pedals, even from standstill, you suddenly get that full wallop of power if you're on level five. And level five is really quite something, you know, you really take off. If you're curious to know a little bit more about what I do as my day job alongside this YouTube channel, you should definitely take a look at setseed.com, which is this CMS that I've built, uh, which is basically my life's work. So it's a CMS platform for web design agencies that just, just radically simplifies and automates the, the process of building websites for clients. It's an incredible thing, I'm super proud of it. So do take a look at that. Okay, so I'm gonna try and show you kind of what happens when you try and get started in level five. I'm in gear seven, which would normally be pretty hard to pedal this. So I'm just gonna start rolling forward, turn the pedal a little bit. So that's like one full stroke on the pedals and we're off. At the full maximum speed with basically no effort on the pedals at all. The format of this bike is quite interesting. Obviously, we've got this step through design. I think it's a really hard design to make look good because that shape is kind of so awkward looking. But actually in person, when you're sat next to this and you're looking up close to it, is so chunky and badass looking that that overall design of the step through, the kind of awkwardness of it, it doesn't really matter so much. Um, I've tried to kind of show that, but I think zooming in using the telephoto lens kind of shows that a little bit more. Uh, I think it's the, the kind of wide angle lens that if you look at this through most pictures and video, it can look a little bit awkward, but actually in person, it's so big and chunky that it looks quite cool. So this is an interesting format, this bike. It looks like a kind of rugged off-road bike. And in some sense it is. So it's great on a rough track like this towpath. Um, it's perfect for that. So uh, it's basically a level track, but it is, it's not paved. So it's kind of rough and has lots of little vibrations. This bike's absolutely brilliant in that situation. It's super comfortable, really plush suspension, massive four inch wide tires, just soak it all up. Um, very smooth, very comfortable. It's a great commuter if some of that journey is, is on a path, you know, like a towpath. It's definitely not a mountain bike. You can't use this in any way, shape or form in proper off-road mountain biking situations. Uh, I think some reviewers are kind of a little bit confused. The fact that it's got big, these big shocks, they assume it's for off-roading. Um, the basic design of this bike is, is never gonna work in an off-road situation like that. The pedals are basically way too low. There is definitely a part of me that wishes the speed limit wasn't there. You know, when you feel the motor get you up to the 25 kilometers an hour and you just, you know you could put a bit more power in. Oh, Jesus. So that was the pedal hitting that bump. Yeah. You gotta watch out for that. Again, it's a problem that would be solved if you didn't have to keep pedaling. Yeah, I guess the issue is at this speed, if you hit a bit of a bump, the suspension really does sag down. And that's enough to, uh, to really take that clearance out from below the pedal. So there's my foot there. It's about, I don't know, it looks like an inch. So as soon as you hit a little bump and that suspension compresses, you get the bang. 
it's definitely a heavy bike. There's no point in pretending otherwise. So with that, obviously you want really good brakes and these definitely have no trouble stopping this. Even from full tilt, you can just whack them on. I think the big tires help with that slowing down as well. One of the most impressive things about this bike is the cargo rack here. I have definitely had the kids sitting on this while I've been hooning it around and it, it, it's definitely really, really strong. You know, you could put a little saddle on that and you could have people sat on that quite happily. So they've got panniers on the website as well, which we'll, we'll design to fit on this, but obviously it's, it's just a really solid rack that comes with the bike. So it's ready to go for strapping cargo to it. Again, just confirms the role of this bike as something that's designed for real utility. It's a useful commuting tool uh, with the ability to carry some good cargo too. I've just realized I've definitely got my mud guard on the wrong way around, which is why I'm covered in mud. Uh, so this front mud guard here, is obviously backwards. So I'm going to switch this mud guard around. So I've got my pocket tool kit. Should be able to pull this off. If I need to hold that nut, I've got my uh, Knipex Cobra XS as well, as always in my pockets. So let's see how we get on. So I'm genuinely surprised at how good this bike is to ride, actually. I think if you wanted to try and beat the traffic and your commute involved a path like this that isn't uh, all on a pavement, this kind of bike is exactly the right thing for that. Yeah, <laughs> I just I've got the mud car the wrong way around. <laughs> so I'm covered in mud, but it should be good for the way back. <laughs> These tools here that I always keep in my pockets, absolutely fantastic. And this is just a classic example of how useful they are. There's a nut on the back there, hex key on there. With these, I'm sorted. It's absolutely brilliant. On this bike, we've got the motor is in the rear hub, um, which is obviously quite a common setup for e-bikes. Um, and I think it actually it contributes to the way it rides. I think if the motor was in the front hub, like the obviously the sort of retrofit kits that you can get, I think I've never ridden one, but I would imagine that really affects the way they feel. It just doesn't seem right to be pulling from the front steering wheel uh, on a bike like that. So I think with this kind of power, it's much better to have it um, in the rear hub. And the question is, can I get this out? Yes, I can. That's better. God. Yeah, all good, thanks. Yeah, I'm just switching the old uh, mud guard the right way around. And there is a right way and a wrong way to use these Knipex pliers. You can check the jags, or the little jagged edge on the teeth. They're pointing that way. So it's, oh, Apple, Watch, Apple Watch thinks I'm doing a workout. It doesn't realize how easy it is. <laughs> it thinks I'm cycling. Um, little jagged teeth there. So it, it will grip better going that way. So it, it's main turning torque is that way. So obviously that's actually the right way around when I'm tightening it. I've got quite a few comments from people saying these are not the best tool to use on nuts, but actually that hex shape cut out there, combined with the fact that you can adjust the, the size of the grip here so that they are perfectly aligned to your nut shape, means they're actually perfect for gripping nuts. That's by far and away what I use them the most for. And they fit in my wallet. Right. Oops, there we go. Good. It suffers a little bit from chain slap, so if you hit a bump a bit too hard, there's no clutch on that rear derailleur, so it will just slap up and you get that bang. On my other mountain bike, the rear derailleur has this clutch on it, which keeps that tension on and it can't suddenly spring in. So um, that, that's a really nice thing to have on one of those. The gear ratios are quite interesting. I don't know really why. Uh, I mean, maybe it's, it's sort of, if, you know, to get you home if there's no power. If it runs out of power, you obviously you can go onto a lower gear ratio, but I've just had it on gear seven the whole time. And obviously as soon as you start pedaling, you get the power assistance anyway so you don't really need the lower gear ratios so i do kind of wonder if the better solution for something like an e-bike would be a fixed ratio uh, and just using the motor to kind of give you the torque that you would have to use a lower gear ratio to achieve normally but obviously that would make it pretty hard to ride in the event that you do run out of power with this obviously you know if it does run out you've got those lower gears if you need to pedal it which you will need obviously up hills because it is heavy so value for money is obviously the real area these cheaper chinese brands are, are competing and when they come up with a bike that's this good in terms of its kind of build quality and all the rest of it it's still got the lg or samsung battery so you know the electrics are kind of uh, you know good you're not you're not having to worry about any unknown brands with that stuff and it's got the shimano gears as well obviously we've got these four inch massive fat tires uh, they're obviously doing a lot of work to make this a really comfortable ride, especially on this kind of track. I think it's just built for this, really. It's a, a bit of a towpath monster. Uh, it's perfect for a, essentially a level track where you can get a full kind of benefit of the electric assistance. Um, but the rough ground is just soaked up by this completely. I mean, this is a ridiculous speed for no effort. You know, it's hard, quite hard to do this with one hand. <laughs> Absolutely ridiculous. I 
Thank you. And back up to 25 kilometers an hour. Another barrier for me using something like this day to day is security. Obviously, e bikes are expensive, and it seems like this kind of arms race between the thieves and the security options that you have available, you know, any kind of portable lock, you can just cut through with a portable angle grinder. So it seems like the arms race between these two are kind of in favor of the thieves at the moment. There is one lock on the market which does seem to really slow down an angle grinder attack. Uh, so I think if I was going to do anything, I'd have one of those, but I'm just not sure if I'd really still want to leave this anywhere in a city. That's definitely another kind of one of these weird barriers that's getting in the way of the adoption of something like e-bikes. So I could cycle to my nearest city on the towpath from where I live on this bike, but the question is what I would do when I get there. I'm just not sure I'd be happy leaving something like this. I guess in reality you just get insurance and you live with the risk and you, you, know, you make the decision. Um, but I do think this is a, one of these things that we kind of need to solve before the adoption of these is going to really take off. One thing that is worth talking about is how the power is actually delivered. So obviously in this UK legal form, the way that you get it to give you the power is just to start turning the pedals. Now there's no correlation between uh, the speed that you turn the pedals or the amount of effort that you turn the pedals to how much power you get. All you have to do is just start slowly turning the pedals. And after enough of a revolution, sort of like it seems to be almost like a full revolution, then the power will kick in. And the amount of power you get is just purely dependent on which level you have set on the handlebars here between one and five but I think it would be kind of nice to have something a bit more kind of proportional to how much effort you are putting in so the downside of it being that way is if you're on level five and then you want to suddenly slow down you can't you, you have to stop pedaling completely and then if you you almost stop because of that you start turning the pedals again suddenly you're off at full beans again so if you want to slow down and go past pedestrians or something like that it's actually quite tricky you have to remember to slow down with the buttons to do that uh, situation like I'm in now so I'm going to slow it right down no, I, I mean, you know, it's, I, yeah, it's, it's quite tricky. All right, I'm in level one now. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so that's the trick. You've got to slow it down to level one when you want to actually ride it slow, basically. So it's not, there's no correlation to your pedaling speed and the motor power. It's just the level one to five on the, on the screen here. So I've been hesitant to get excited about e-bikes in the UK because of this UK restriction issue. I've sort of always felt that whatever I do, I'm not going to be really appreciating the full capabilities of these things. And that is obviously in some sense true. This thing has got a thousand watt motor, but it's restricted to 250 watts with the speed limit restriction as well. So um, there is a kind of a slight shame that you're paying for obviously that thousand watt motor, but you can't use it. But actually, I think that is definitely uh, taking away from what this can offer at this price point. It is still an incredible incredible thing. It will still work as a really effective commuting tool and this kind of game-changing ability of e-bikes to bring kind of longer distance travel with much less effort and, and much more convenience is still very much part of the package here. If you enjoyed this video take a look at the video I've done looking at my pocket carry tools which we've obviously seen in this video and I'll see you there.